Yo, Atlas speaking and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. What if I was reborn into the Bleach universe and became a hollow with a system? Synopsis, Dave died and was surprisingly reincarnated with all his memories. Unfortunately, it seems to be Earth. Japan to be specific. Naruki City. Hmm, sounds vaguely familiar. Maybe it was on the news or something. Oh, well. Worse yet he has to learn Japanese from scratch, he has no special powers or system. What kind of lame reincarnation is this? No ice guy, no powers, no system? Why even reincarnate? Also it seems to be the past, no smartphone and computers are backwards as all hell. Things just can't be worse. That is until he unfortunately dies again. However, as he lay there bleeding out and slowly dying, he finally realized he wasn't reincarnated on the real Earth. This was the world of Bleach, and he was attacked by White and infected by his holification poison. Can he catch a break? He doesn't even get a chance to become a regular spirit and maybe a Shinigami. Just a mindless hollow. Let the tale begin. Chapter 1 Reincarnation Dave had just finished college and was ready to make it big. To celebrate he went camping with a few close friends. Unfortunately, they didn't expect it to end the way it did. The group was attacked by a wild bear and Dave, in a burst of unexpected courage, tried to protect one of his friends that got caught. He succeeded in saving his friend, but at the cost of his own life as he was slowly mauled alive. Thankfully between the adrenaline and blood loss the pain didn't last too long. There was no tunnel with a bright light, unfortunately no pearly gates and thankfully no burning pits when he barely regained consciousness. It was hard to maintain, but all he noticed was just darkness, though it was warm and comfy. He would fade in and out of consciousness for who knows how long. Maybe it was days, or was it years? Who knows? Finally, it seems like there was actually a light at the end of the tunnel, but it wasn't heaven that was waiting for him. It seems I was actually reincarnated. Where was God, though? What about my powers? Don't I get a system? I want to speak to the manager, he thought to himself. There was a doctor, and he looked like a perfectly normal human. No unusual hair or eye color nor unusual ears. No sharp teeth. Perfectly normal human, it seemed. So much for Ice Guy, he looks Asian, though. Am I Asian this time around? Despite being a little disappointed, he was still curious about his new life. The man said some words he couldn't understand, but having been a closet weeb in his former life, he recognized it as Japanese. Definitely not American this time around and seems to really be Earth. Such a shame. Here I was hoping that I would have some cool magic powers. I didn't meet any god or anything though. Finally he got to see his mom and could confirm he was Japanese this life. Well, at least half Japanese since he had yet to see someone he was sure was supposed to be his father. Thankfully his mom seemed kind and attractive, hopefully his father was attractive too because no one wants to be ugly. Unfortunately, he didn't get some kind of translation skill or inherent language he could not understand what they were saying except maybe a familiar word once in a while from all the anime he had watched with subtitles. Nowhere near enough to even understand a single sentence though. He made sure to smile and giggle at his mom and make a good impression. Don't want anything like a mom with postpartum depression at the start of his new life so making sure his mom was happy was his first priority. Finally what he believed to be his father showed up in a rush and thankfully he seems to be above average in the looks department. It's hard to say for sure though, he is so used to western faces and standards of beauty it is hard to tell exactly how attractive he is by Japanese beauty standards though he is sure his mother is a beauty. Also he is now sure he is 100% Japanese this time around, glad we were able to clear that one up. It doesn't take him long to figure out his name seems to be Hisashi as both parents have repeated this multiple times when baby talking to him. After a while he feels extremely tired. It seems even if he was reincarnated he is still limited to his weak baby body prone to exhaustion. Learning a new language has been a pain for him, but being a baby he has little else to do and with his memories from his last life he at least has a leg up managing to start speaking not only simple words, but simple sentences by the time he is one year old. 
He has also learned that aside from the not getting any powers, systems, or really anything unusual with his reincarnation he is born in a relatively affluent family with both parents being above average and looks meaning he definitely has a leg up financially over most and probably will in looks too in the future. Neither of which can be overestimated in worth most of all given that we are on earth. His parents were both loving, though he did wish his father was home more though he already knew sadly this wasn't unusual for Japan. He had also finally learned his full name, his family name was Saito making him Saito Isashi. He almost cried when he found out the meaning of his first name as he died before even hitting the prime of his life the first time around and was now given a name symbolizing a long life. The irony was painful. Maybe it's a sign of better things to come this time around though. Bonsai. One thing is unusual though, he doesn't see any smartphones. There is a TV, but it seems to be one of those old tube TVs. At first he just thought his family was old-fashioned, but finally a few years later a computer was introduced and it also looked absolutely ancient, but his parents were all excited about it. A few years after he started going to school his mom was pregnant again. This time she had a girl though so he became a big brother to little Reina. She was pretty timid, but thanks to Hisashi's maturity it didn't take long for her to get attached to him as he made sure to be a fun, but responsible and reliable older brother. Meanwhile, due to his knowledge from his previous life and maturity he managed to do well enough to start school early and even skip years every so often. He had already formulated a life path for him to be able to get through all the boring school and start life faster this time around instead of having to spend 23 years before getting out into the world this time. He might not have gotten anything special from his reincarnation, but his knowledge and mature mind were plenty of an advantage to speed through school, attend a top college and graduating before he hits 20. He even made sure to focus on IT and programming knowing just how big of a factor computers were going to be by the time he graduated. Chapter 2, Unfair Hisashi has worked hard and managed to get into a top college by the age of 14. Was it hard going to class with kids years older? Sure. Would it really have been easier going to school with kids his own age when his mental age was well into his 20s? Not so much. Though he didn't have many friends growing up with the age difference he had plenty of when he Samus. Given that he was quite cute and much younger than the female classmates they tended to treat him more like a cute little brother than a regular male classmate. Unfortunately, this also meant he didn't have a lot of male friends among his classmates. Skipping years also meant leading the existing classes and having to rebuild new relationships in a new class each time. Meanwhile at home he made sure to help out around the home and with his little sister to alleviate some of the pressure on his parents. They had long gotten used to his maturity so though he still had to act a bit like a kid the genius kid label helped enough that he could get away with acting a few years older than he was without anyone being suspicious of him. His parents were extremely proud of him and his sister had grown a minor brother complex for the brother that always took care of her when their parents weren't available. The only thing that was unfortunate is that despite mentally being over 30 and being pretty attractive with glossy ink black mid-length hair, smooth fair skin, eyes like an abyss you could drown in, good facial features and being in shape there were no romantic relationships. The girls his physical age were far too immature for him to even consider and the ones in his classes that were slightly more mature never considered him anything more than a cute little brother to drag around and cuddle in purely platonic ways unfortunately. Since romantic relationships were a dead end for the moment most of his excess energy outside of school he put towards practicing Kendo and Aido from a young age figuring that since he was born in Japan he should at least practice something unique to his country of birth and even better if it is something that can help protect himself. Fortunately Japan is an insanely safe country and they lived in a relatively affluent neighborhood so despite practicing for over 14 years he hasn't had to actually use any of it. As he started to go to college he made sure to pick the brand new programming courses for his electives and made sure to study even more on this outside of his regular coursework to the point where he was starting to build out some of his ideas for the future. He already knew about the dot-com bubble and wanted to be poised to make a lot of money by taking advantage of his knowledge about where things were headed by the time he got out of college he would already have enough done to launch cutting-edge software he knew was going to be a success on the market. It won't be Bill Gates and Steve Jobs this time around, it would be Saito Hisashi a name to be known around the world as the leader in technology. 
He was now 16 and enjoying his second year of college. Just two more years and he could graduate and wrap up the last of his code that would revolutionize the world into a new age of computing beating Microsoft and Apple to the punch by introducing a graphical Windows interface-based operating system along with a business suite that would tempt just about any business over a year before Microsoft would release its first version of Windows or Apple's Lisa OS caught on. He had just finished his kendo practice and was on his way home at night as he was passing through a park he felt the hair on the back of his neck stand on end for no apparent reason and a shiver traveled up his spine. Suddenly he heard a loud roar that sounded like the T-Rex in Jurassic Park. Not knowing what what was going on he quickly grabbed his bot can from his training gear and held it while in a defensive stance ready to respond. Who's there? This isn't funny, he yelled hoping that this was nothing but some kind of prank. Before he even knew what happened he suddenly felt an immense amount of pain from his abdomen. When he looked down at first he saw nothing except a gaping hole in his stomach, but slowly as if phasing in and out of existence before finally stabilizing he saw some kind of black blade sticking out of the front of his stomach. Son of a bitch, not again, he thought to himself in desperation before suddenly the blade turned and slashed out of the side of his stomach leaving a gaping wound that was no doubt fatal. He struggled to turn around when he saw something he wasn't expecting. It was a vaguely humanoid creature, but its body was completely black except for a striking white face mask. It had horns and instead of hands its forearms were massive blades instead one of which had just nearly cut him in half. Fuck, isn't that white? I was fucking tricked. You sent me to bleach without any powers? I really want to speak to that goddamn manager now, he yelled in his mind as he fell to the ground bleeding out just like he had in his first life. So much for a long life this time around. This isn't fair, he though slowly growing more lightheaded. Then suddenly he saw White running away only to notice a burly guy with spiky hair in Shihaku's show and a white Hayori. Isn't. That. Ishin? Shit, his thoughts were getting slower as he continued bleeding out, but no one seemed to be paying him any mind as there were no humans and the Shinigami were more focused on chasing White. Not only do I reincarnate without any special powers, it turns out it's the world of Bleach and I now I don't even get to become a Fullbringer, Quincy, or Shinigami, he thought desperately. Slowly a strange extreme burning sensation was spreading from his abdomen. Is this the holification poison? Is that all I get? To become a mindless hollow likely to be consumed by others? No, he stared up at the night sky in endless frustration. Chapter 3, Hollow System Initializing Status, Dying, Hollowfication in Progress Action, Prevent Hollowfication Error Error Second Attempt Failure Third Attempt Failure Action preserving. Consciousness, success. Consciousness fortified. Consciousness anchored. Hollow system initialized. Consciousness unable to handle hollowfication. Consciousness entering forced hibernation. What? Those were Hisashi's last thoughts before his consciousness was swallowed up by an endless abyss. He couldn't feel anything. He had no pulse, no breath, no heartbeat. There wasn't any sound. There was nothing to see just endless darkness. He didn't even feel like he had a body. Where am I? Who am I? What am I? He could only continue to question himself and his situation for what seemed forever, the only reprieve was sleep and he did a lot of it. After who knows how long he started feeling some kind of headache. Normally he would be annoyed but this was the first thing he had felt for as long as he could remember and anything was better than the void of all things that had been his existence. Suddenly he heard something. That's new, he though. Action, integrating consciousness. Suddenly the headache got much worse, but at the same time his mind started clearing up from the fog it had been in. Consciousness integrated. Action, building spirit body. A burning sensation started in his body. Weight body, he thought to himself. He couldn't quite describe it, but it felt he was growing somehow. Not like anything else made sense. Spirit body successfully established. Action, stimulating memories. That's right. I'm Saito Hisashi, 
he could finally remember who he was and also how he did. A second time. New. What about my plans? My future, everything was perfect. What about my operating system? It was almost done, he screamed in his mind unwilling to accept that all his plans and effort for sixteen years had been completely wasted due to one unfortunate event. He was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, again. Wait why am I still conscious? Didn't I get hollowfied? he wondered. Answer, hollow system preserved host's consciousness despite hollowfication. So what happened? he asked. Answer, system slowed the holification process and forced host's consciousness into hibernation to allow for integration between the changing body and consciousness without losing the host's self. So you're saying I still became a hollow, he continued. Answer, correct. Can I still become a Shinigami instead, he asked desperately. Answer, implausible. What about a visored, he was grasping at straws now. Answer, implausible. So I'm stuck as a hollow. He sighed. Answer, correct. That wasn't a question, he responded slightly snarky. He slowly opens his eyes and sees he still seems to be in the same park he was in before, but upon closer inspection there are quite some changes. Some things are gone and others are new while the things that are still there look more worn out. How long was I in hibernation to be exact? Answer, host was in hibernation for ten years. Ten years, he practically yelled at the system. Answer, preserving the human consciousness during holification is near impossible, they are incompatible to an extreme degree. The only way to achieve an exception was through slowing the process of holification significantly as system manually guided the process and integrated the host's consciousness. This prolonged the process to ten years. Then what about my parents? What about my sister? he asked. Answer, unknown. He sighed again, there wasn't much he could do about it now. He looked down a bit and he seemed to be much taller than he remembered. Closer to ten feet tall it seemed. Also when he looked at his arms his forearms looked like a cross between a sword and stag beetle's pincers. Also he had four legs now. That's going to take some getting used to, he though to himself trying to stay positive about the definite clear proof that he wasn't human or even anything close to resembling human anymore. If I remember correctly there was a pond in this park, he thinks heading over to try taking a look at himself in the reflection. What he sees isn't quite as surprising anymore. He looks like a giant beetle that took steroids with a white hollow mask somewhat reminiscent of a rhinoceros beetle head and the stag beetle pincer like arm blades. Most of his carapace was black except the arm blades and the wing covers which were iridescent black green and blue making them quite beautiful in a macabre way. Oh I have wings now. I couldn't even be a bipedal hollow he could almost cry with how far he was from anything not completely monstrous. So much for being handsome, though I guess my carapace has a kind of beauty to it. Arg I'm already being corrupted by these horrible aesthetics, he wallowed in his misery slapping at the water in anger which caused quite the splash. Is it even a slap if you don't have a hand? Thankfully no one was around to pay attention to a huge splash coming out of seemingly nowhere. Well, what now? he thought to himself. Mission, devour one hundred animal spirits. Reward, skill, soul body separation. Well that's a little morbid to say the least. I guess it's better than not having it though. What is this about missions and skills though, he wondered. Answer, system includes mission subsystem that provides tasks to guide host and can provide a variety of rewards including skills. If missions and skills are a thing, what about stats and status, he asked eagerly wondering if his moment had finally come. Answer, correct, the system does include such subsystems allowing growth through completing missions, consuming spiritual energy or souls. Wait. Stats. Status. Status panel, he said rapidly. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 49. Race. Hollow. Rank, hollow. Level, 1. Experience, 0 out of 10. Stats. Strength, 5. Dexterity, 2. Constitution, 10. Intelligence, 
5. Spirit Power, 15. Available Stat Points, 5. Passive Skills. Spiritual Energy Absorption. High Speed Regeneration. Acidic Touch. Active Skills. Wow, I got old fast. Wait, those 10 years don't count. Change it to 39, he thought. Answer, negative. Chapter 4, New Life. So what's up with this bullshit tanky build? I'm not putting up with that kind of crap. I need to address this. Hisashi said indignantly at the reveal of his stats. Um, system, could you give me a reference for these stats? It's kind of useless as is, he asked the system. Answer, a regular human would roughly have one point for each stat on average. So that means I'm like super powerful now, right? He asked excitedly, you could almost see the twinkle in his beady bug eyes. Answer, only when compared to regular humans or pluses. Compared to anything else host is extremely weak due to the complications experienced during holification. Even a non-seated Shinigami fresh out of the academy could easily destroy you currently. For clearer reference Kurosaki Ichigo before even unlocking his Shinigami powers had a spirit power of 10 which though unlikely would still be enough to be considered a potential hazard to your current self. Meanwhile Ishida Yuri would be able to annihilate you in a single shot. Damn. Is there no good news? He asked rhetorically. Answer, negative. Really? He became dispirited as he responded. Answer, Though host is currently extremely weak thanks to the hollow system host has no barriers in his growth, if host continues to absorb spirit power, devour souls and complete missions unlike other hollows host is guaranteed to reach fast lord or more without any bottlenecks or dead ends in the progress. Unlike other spiritual beings host is also able to guide his growth through the use of stat points gained through leveling and missions allowing him to branch on other pathways rather than being stuck on a predetermined path. Finally through the system host is also able to complete missions and gain skills unusual or even unavailable to other hollows. Finally the conversion of spirit power and devoured souls is far more efficient with the assistance of the system allowing for much faster growth than your regular everyday hollow. Well I guess that's finally some good news at least if I can survive that long, he muttered to himself. Wait speaking of survival wasn't Aizen snooping on everyone there when I got attacked by White? Aren't I absolutely fucked, he suddenly realized. Answer, host was lucky, due to the process of hibernation and merging the host's soul appeared to have disintegrated after the attack. Aizen is likely to believe host failed the holification and instead died as a result. What's so lucky about hibernating for ten years, he grumbled at the system. Well by now Ichigo should have been born already so at least Aizen should have moved on from Naruki City to Karakura Town now that ten years have passed and shouldn't have the time to be peeping around here anymore. I can't let him notice me yet or I know he is going to be using me in all sorts of fucked up experiments until I'm either one of his little slaves or there is nothing left to experiment on, he tried to think optimistically. At the same time I can't be eaten by other hollow or caught by Shinigami, with my current strength those would be an instant game over and I don't know if I'll make it through a third death, he worried trying to think of contingencies to prevent himself getting caught and once for if he does get caught. Okay first off I can't be caught so this tanky bullshit has got to go. System put all my available stat points into dexterity, he had decided on his first few steps. He would need to survive and there is no better way to survive than the ability to attack quickly and run even quicker huge bug body be damned. Answer, affirmative host dexterity has been upgraded by 5 to 7. That's more like it, he said then quickly tried to run around the pond only to find out he had really become about 3 times as fast as he was before. He was running like a bug out of hell. He was a giant bug the size of a car running at the speed of a car downtown. It was quite exhilarating. Out of the corner of his eyes he saw what seemed to be the spirit of raccoon, wait it's Japan so probably a tanuki. Before it has a chance to respond he dashes over to it, his four legs in overdrive before chomping down the whole thing in one gulp. It didn't even realize what had happened before it was all over. Mission, devour 100 animal spirits 1 out of 100. XP, 1 out of 10. Sorry little guy, but it's either you or me now and it definitely isn't going to be me. Just gotta keep this up. 
I guess this is my new life for now whether I like it or not, he reassured himself. That was the night mysteriously all animal spirits in this small neighborhood park were ruthlessly exterminated. No need to thank him though. Mission, devour 100 animal spirits 10 out of 100. XP, 10 out of 10. Level up. Plus one available stat points. Sweet, he yelled out, but it sounded like a hollow roar so he quickly shut up afraid he might attract attention. Thankfully he was lucky and it didn't seem anyone with sufficient spiritual power was around. Okay pump it into dexterity, he made sure to just think again. Answer, affirmative host's dexterity has been upgraded by 1 to 8. He looked at himself in the pond again and it seemed like he had become slightly more streamlined, though not much. Still a beetle, after all I guess. You can call me Volkswagen now though, he chuckled at his own corny joke. Ah, his little sister would have definitely given him a sympathy laugh. This thought quickly dampened his momentary mirth. Reina, I've been a failure of a brother, he mumbled to himself. He looks at the reflection in the water again and shakes his head. Okay, this park has been fully exhausted and it isn't like larger animals are constantly dying in the park. It'll be a while before the grocery store is restocked. What now? he asked himself. Chapter 5, Visiting I guess I'll carefully explore the neighborhood and check out my old house. Maybe my family is still there, he thought to himself. It didn't take long to get to his house as it was well within walking distance even when he was a human. On the way came across some pluses that hurriedly hid from him some even just cowering in a corner at the sight of him, but he left them alone. Something just felt wrong about eating them. From eating the animal should he knew it wouldn't really taste like anything and it would just taste like spirit power and the more of it the tastier it was, but something about eating something that had a human mind and form was still very disturbing to him. So he just left them alone for now leaving some very confused pluses in his wake. It was a little awkward to navigate through the city without disturbing anything, though his newly enhanced dexterity helped a lot. When he got to the house it still looked very much like he remembered it. The paint had faded a little, but beyond that everything looked no different. The car parked out front was different though. I guess it has been ten years after all. I wonder if they still live here. Not that I would blame them. Though I didn't last long after the attack I'm pretty sure the scene was as gruesome as you can imagine for your average Japanese citizen. Though I doubt it was better than my first death. I'm pretty sure the bear kept mauling me unlike white, he didn't want to get his hopes up as he neared the window to the living room. When he stared into the living room he was at once both glad and extremely saddened as the most noticeable thing there was a new black shrine with a picture of his former self and some incense burning in his honor. Well, it was new to him, it was quite obvious that the shrine was showing its age as the black varnish had faded here and there. It was quite surreal. It was still early in the morning so it must have only just been lit. At least they didn't move, he sighed to himself. He hadn't seen any of his family members yet though. It wasn't until a little later that a girl slightly older than he had been when he died walked up to the shrine and stared at his picture for a while with a strained look offering a prayer. She had changed a lot, she was just a little girl the last time he saw her. Her hair had grown, her face matured she was a young woman now. She must be eighteen now. He wanted to reach out to her so badly, but all he had were these damned blades and even if he had hands his touch as a hollow would just be poison to her. He wanted to cry, but this form wouldn't even grant him this little reprieve as his eyes lacked the ability to cry so the only thing that could cry was his very soul as he watched her knowing she couldn't even see him and if she could all she would see was a monster to recoil from. A little after his parents came downstairs, his mother started preparing breakfast while his sister set the table. His parents also looked significantly older. Time had not been kind. His loss probably hadn't been kind either he was sure. He noticed his mother still frequently glanced at his picture in the shrine. There was nothing he could do though, no matter how much he wanted to tell them he was still okay. Well sort of okay. His father was rather restrained, but he had always been that way so it was kind of hard to tell, but before he left for work he kneeled in front of the shrine offering a sincere prayer too despite showing little emotion on the surface. Shortly after his father left, his sister picked up a bag and headed to what he could only guess was either high school or college. 
He didn't know since he hadn't been there for her. He slumped down lifelessly on the ground in a catatonic state as he just couldn't handle it for a moment. The only thing that kept repeating in his mind over and over and over again was simply why? Everything had been on track, planned everything was going well. Why couldn't he just catch a break this time around? Thankfully barely anyone would even be able to see him so he didn't really need to care about others seeing him. After watching his mother cleaning up the house for a bit and do laundry he finally got up and left. If I can get at least to a juches I might not be as terrifying, if not vast O Lord definitely unlocks a much more human form. I have to get there as soon as possible without getting on Aizen's radar. System do I need Aizen and the Hogyoku if I want to become an Arankar after becoming a Vasto Lord? he asked. Answer, negative, as long as host becomes a Vasto Lord and as long as host manages to level up and gather enough spirit power after then the system is able to use these to protect the host as they remove their mask and transform into the Arankar form. Good then I have my goal and I need to do it fast. I can't leave them waiting, he though to himself firming his determination. How much XP to level up? he asked. XP, 0 out of 30. Good I should be able to level up at least one or two more times just by finishing the current mission, he nodded to himself and felt a little better now that he had set a clear goal and at least had a path for the next step. Chapter 6, Moving Forward With renewed vigor Hisashi moved towards his goal. Just like he was able to find a decent few animal spirits in the park he died and he should be able to do the same in the other parks in Naruki. He starts with those nearby slowly making his way to Central Park closer to downtown Naruki. On his way he consumes many tanuki, squirrel, marten, snake, civet and bat animal spirits. Crazy enough he even managed to come across a lone bear spirit in one of the parks closer to the edge of the city where it met. He was rushing from one park to the next at full speed which had reached about 40 miles per hour now. He wasn't proud to be bullying these weak little animal spirits, but if it could let him see his family even a moment sooner he would swallow the shame and soldier on. Soon he had cleared out all the parks on the way to Central Park along with some wayward animal spirits between the parks. They may just have been some birds, but hey they counted. Mission, Devour 100 Animal Spirits 68 out of 100 XP, 30 out of 30 Level up Plus 1 available stat points XP, 28 out of 60. Added into dexterity again system, he remembered to add. Answer, affirmative host's dexterity has been upgraded by 1 to 9. Finally he made his way to Central Park. It was almost larger than all the parks he had visited up to this point put together. He would rub his hands if he could in anticipation. There was no way he wasn't going to be able to complete his mission here. Suddenly he felt his hair stand on end. Wait he doesn't have hair anymore. Well he felt a chill up his spine. Damn beetles don't have skeletons. Well whatever. He dashed behind a building, made sure to be releasing as little spiritual pressure as he could manage while being as silent and hidden as a ten-foot beetle could possibly be. He became surprisingly proficient in his time of need though. He managed to see a male Shinigami with black mid-length parted hair. Wait isn't this that Renji fanboy? Well as much of a loser as he is currently I am a bigger one so please don't find me right now. I guess my luck could be worse. Any seated officer would probably be able to sense me immediately, he thinks silently. TSK, I can't find the signal. Was it a glitch? Rikichi says smacking some kind of device in his hand and looking around before finally leaving. What was that about? Hisashi wondered to himself. Answer. Host's spirit power is currently so low it is barely above humans with above average spiritual power making it hard to detect. While moving at high speed host was slightly detectable, however the host's cowardly actions minimizing his movement host managed to remain undetectable. I wasn't really asking, but no need to call me out like that, I will be powerful soon enough. Just you wait, he spits back at the system before sighing to himself. I think I'm going crazy between the 10-year hibernation and having no one to talk to besides the system. He gives it some time to let Rikichi make some distance before coming out from behind the building and heading deeper into the park. 
It's really good that regular people can't see him or this would be impossible to pull off during the day no matter how carefully he moves there's no avoiding the 10-foot beetle if you can see it. He manages to find a burrow of Amami rabbits that died. Damn these things are really ugly for rabbits, are rabbits supposed to be cute, but I'll take every little bit I can get and there's quite a few of them here, he though. He also found some sicka deer that filled his count out nicely. Mission, devour 100 animal spirits 100 out of 100. Mission completed. Skill soul body separation granted. XP, 60 out of 60. Level up. Plus one available stat points. Yes, he cheered himself on. Add the point to dexterity, he made sure not to forget. Answer, affirmative host's dexterity has been upgraded by 1 to 10. So where is the next mission, he frowns. Answer, completion of mission does not necessarily unlock a new mission. Missions depend on availability and the host's situation. System recommends making continuing steady progress leveling until new mission becomes available. Well I guess that's something, can't complain too much about the help I'm getting, he thought. He hunted the rest of the animal spirits in the park until there were none left. From then on he would make sure to patrol the parks regularly to catch any new spirits that popped up before other hollow could eat them, they hollified or they simply dissipated. While he was doing this he also made sure to visit his family home every morning and walked his sister to school while talking about how his previous day had been. She might not be able to hear him or see him, but talking to her made him feel just a little more human than his lonely life filled with nothing, but patrolling and hunting animal spirits had been making him feel. Maybe it's like when people talk to the grave of a deceased friend or family member and it helps them feel better. Rather ironic that in this case he is the deceased to the living that can't hear him. It's rather bittersweet, but he makes sure never to miss a day. All right, show me my status panel system, he requested. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 49. Race, hollow. Rank, hollow. Level, 6. XP, 128-210. Stats Strength, 5 Dexterity, 12 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 5 Spirit Power, 39 Available Stat Points, 0 Passive Skills Spiritual Energy Absorption High Speed Regeneration Acidic Touch Active Skills Soul Body Separation he had kept putting his free points towards dexterity as he still had no way to stay safe beyond having the ability to run away quickly when in need and really compared to Shuenpa or Sonido he was still as slow as a snail. Meanwhile it seemed his spirit power slowly grew even without leveling up simply through the passive absorption of his spiritual energy absorption, skill adding roughly one point per day for no effort. He guessed it would be faster if it weren't for the dearth of spirit energy in Naruki City and probably most of Earth compared to Soul Society and Hueco Mundo. System explained soul body separation he requested of the system. Answer, host can use spirit power to code part of his body, this part will be able to force the soul from a physical body or artificial body. Not sure how useful that will be, but I guess I'll take what I can get for now, he sighs before closing the status panel. Chapter 7, Emergency Mission Things had been pretty uneventful for the most part during the past few weeks. Bullying weaklings and hiding from the strong ones, as usual. Are we sure this isn't a Chinese novel? Currently he was on his regular afternoon patrol when suddenly he heard a very annoying alarm sound he hadn't heard before. Emergency Mission, Protect Reina. Reward, Spirit Power Concealment. What? He screamed internally. Before he could even have a second thought he dashed towards his home, but when he got there no one was home yet. He knew the route his sister took when walking to and from school and this was around the time she usually would be getting out of school. He hurriedly traced the route towards school hoping he could make it in time to prevent anything from happening. It took him only a few minutes to make it halfway through the route as he was now capable at moving at about highway speeds despite his lack of any specialized movement skills so far. He just turned the corner when he saw some frivolous rich kid with four lackeys pulling his sister into an abandoned alley in the distance. 
His mind went blank and he ran after them into the alleyway. When he got there the lackeys were surround her as the rich kid was trying to pull down her skirt and there were tears in her eyes as she was trying to push them away as best she could, but it was futile with five guys surrounding her. He was barely even cognizant of what he was doing as he let out a massive hollow roar powerful enough to shake the surroundings. All of them stumbled over unable to keep their footing including his sister. He was so enraged. Death was not sufficient, he must show them absolute terror. Quickly used his blade's dull edge to slam them away from his sister and into the wall with little care. It wasn't enough though. They couldn't see him. Suddenly he had a thought and slowly spirit power started coating his blades enhancing the iridescent effect on them even further as they seemed to glow. Then he slammed them into them again except this time they didn't slam into the walls again, but their souls separated from their bodies and slammed into the wall while their bodies remained where they were, but slumping like a puppet that had lost its strings the only thing indicating they were still alive their slowly rising and falling chests. What the hell is that monster? One of the lackeys yelled. Shit, 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 just protect me I'll call for the police. The rich kid tried to put on a confident face while planning to abandon the lackeys to slow down the beast that suddenly appeared out of nowhere. They were so terrified didn't even notice their physical bodies laying on the ground unconscious attached to them by the chain of fate. The lackeys weren't buying this though, Hisashi wasn't like some kind of big animal, this was an absolute monster, the kind that nightmares are made of. There was nothing normal about this and police weren't going to solve this. They all started running at the same time leading it to survival of the fittest. This only enraged Hisashi further though and he released another powerful hollow roar that made their legs turn to jelly as they struggled to crawl their way out of the alley. Hisashi looked at the chain of fate before putting his blades between the chain links then using it to slowly drag the first victim back towards him. The others hadn't even noticed it yet, but the victim was screaming bloody murder as he came closer and closer to the monstrosity. When he came within arm's reach of Hisashi his face was filled with snot and tears and if he has been able to piss himself in soul form he probably already would have. Suddenly Hisashi's mask separated between a lower and upper jaw revealing a row of razor-sharp teeth. He used the dull inside of the blade arms like a pincer gripping the lackey and bringing him up to his mouth and chomping down without a second thought consuming the entire soul. Plus 50 XP XP 247-450 plus one spirit power. Spirit power, 47. He was so enraged he didn't even notice the notifications. The whole thing happened so fast the others hadn't even made it to the end of the alley when he started pulling the one farthest away towards him. The others looked as if they had seen death itself as they watched the one that had made it farthest of them all slowly be dragged back past them towards the jaws of hell. The second one didn't last any longer than the first. They were all absolutely trash just like their behavior. By the time the first made it to the end of the alley he had finished the third. Before the fourth lackey could even do anything he was pulled out of the bright street lit by the orange setting sun back into the dark alleyway towards certain death while squealing like the dying pig he was leaving only the rich kid that was leading this little gang. Hisashi had left him for last though, nothing can bring out true terror like a sprinkling of hope and that was what he had given him by letting him reach the street. Plus 50 XP X3. XP, 397 out of 450. Plus 1 Spirit Power X3. Spirit Power, 50. The rich kid started running up to people, but surprisingly despite his loud yelling for attention they ignored him like he wasn't there. Quickly he gave up moving further up the street to other people trying to get the attention of anyone willing to give it. Finally he saw a patrolman from the small neighborhood police station. Just as he thought he was saved and wanted to run up to him his chain of fate suddenly went taut allowing him not one step further and just a moment later he was slowly being dragged back to the alley kicking and screaming at the top of his lungs trying to grab hold of anything he could, but no one was even looking at him and he wasn't strong enough to resist the pull of the chain. Hisashi made sure to pull him back slowly unlike the lackeys, by now the rich kid was hyperventilating and in a fatal position as he was dragged the last bit finally given up resistance. Oh it seems his mind snapped, how, good, he thought before finally gulping down the last one. Plus 70 XP. XP, 450 out of 450. Level up. Plus 1 free stat point. XP, 
17 out of 550. Plus 2 Spirit Power. Spirit Power, 52. Emergency Mission Completed. Skill Spirit Power Concealment Granted. Chapter 8, Fear. Hisashi turned around looking at Reina who was still trembling in fear on the ground behind, thankfully he had managed to avoid any further harm to her both from the attackers and himself. Meanwhile Reina had managed to see a vague shimmering outline of him. Due to him spending so much time near her his increased spirit power had managed to stimulate hers and now that she had experienced an extreme fear of death she managed to acquire a very weak form of spiritual sight allowing her to see just a fraction of the spiritual world and it was only scaring her further. Hisashi took a step towards her, but she grew even further terrified tears streaming down her face as she recoiled away from him and started crawling backwards in fear when he moved towards her. Finally her back hitting the wall stopping her from moving further away. His heart stopped for a moment causing him to hesitate. Reina he tried to say to her gently, but it barely even sounded like what he was trying to say due to his current form not being anything like human and far larger in size creating an extremely low bass sound instead. It would have been hard enough to recognize as her name if she hadn't currently been scared out of her wits. Despite being quite pained he turned around a moment later disappearing at the highest speed he could achieve leaving her alone, the only thing to remind her that this wasn't just some terrifying hallucination the five slumped bodies that were no longer breathing now that their souls had been consumed by Hisashi. After running halfway across town and slumping down in another deserted alley to hide himself it took him quite some time to finally calm himself down. System, what just happened? I was barely even in control there, he asked. Answer, despite best efforts by the system hollow physique will still have some influence on host, the host will still experience hunger for souls and increased sensitivity to negative emotions such as anger, grief, desire etc. System recommends hosts stay mindful of their emotional state to minimize such influence. No, though it's a little scary I wouldn't be able to survive as a hollow if I had kept a completely human mindset. I just need to make sure that I remain more in control if this happens again. Not necessarily prevent it completely. Thanks for the explanation, he thinks as he considers how he was before his transformation and what will be necessary if he wants to survive and thrive as a hollow enough to be able to reunite with his family. Worse though is I terrified my sister. How is that even possible, he worries. Calculating Probabilities Answer. According to calculation the highest probability is that due to host having higher spirit power and regular interaction and close proximity her spirit power was stimulated. It hasn't been enough awakened spiritual powers on its own, but today's events stimulated something. Hisashi sighs, is this going to be a good or bad thing? I'm not sure. If her spirit power is growing due to my influence I need to make sure to protect her though as this makes her more of a target for hollows. Well just another reason I need to become stronger, if I don't I'll be responsible for even more danger than she would have been if I didn't survive at all. Now that I think about it I got an insane amount of XP there though. I got more in a few minutes than I usually get in days, he thought to himself. Answer, animals barely contain any spiritual power and their souls are weak fading quickly, they provide minimal amounts of spirit power when converted as compared to human souls. There is a similar difference between human souls and hollow or shinigami souls. The variance in the latter two is far greater though than in human souls. Yeah, I guess that rich kid did give a decent bit more than the other four did. I guess he wasn't as much of a waste as the rest. Not that I regret what I did, but I can't start attacking innocent humans or their souls. System am I powerful enough to be able to start confronting other hollow? He asks. Answer, not recommended, though host is powerful enough to confront the weaker hollow now if host comes across a stronger specimen injury and death become quite likely. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. I need to get stronger faster though and the growth is really slowing down using just the animal spirits though, he responds pensively. He can't keep the safe, but extremely slow path forever. What was that new skill I got as the mission reward, he asks remembering he managed to complete the mission. He hadn't even know about it as the mission and reward was the last thing on his mind compared to his sister's safety. Answer, spirit power concealment allows the user to completely eliminate the spirit power they passively emit. 
it would kind of be like stealth from any spirit power sensing ability or technology. Isn't that exactly what I need to make sure I don't get caught by Hollow nor Shinigami? He was quite surprised. Answer, correct, though the host still remains visible to individuals with high spirit power. Though system used stealth as an example this is not like an actual stealth skill. Host would need to gain some kind of camouflage skill to complement the spirit power concealment skill to achieve something akin to true stealth. No, this is already a massive improvement. It will allow me to stay off Soul Society's radar, avoid being hunted by Hollow and Shinigami while also enabling me to hunt other Hollow and landing a sneak attack on them greatly increasing the odds of success compared to before. Though I've solved the speed issue, this huge body is still a massive pain when it comes to that aspect and this skill will help a lot in mitigating some of that, he retorts to the system. Alright, so time to get back to hunting, but now while I'm on patrol and I come across what seems to be a weaker hollow I won't do everything I can to avoid it, but will consider engaging it if I'm in an advantageous position, he decides. Chapter 9, Kikaku Intensifies in an abandoned building near his family home Hisashi was resting after the many things that had only just happened and wanted to put his thoughts together. Flying by the seat of your pants is never a good plan. Most of all when manipulative bastards like Aizen are skulking around. Now that I've completed the first missions and gained some modicum of power, at least enough to not be the absolute weakest of the bunch I need to start really planning for the future, he though. Okay, well let's start from what I know. I accidentally got caught up in the white incident which I know was about 20 years before the events at the start of Bleach. Then I hibernated so we should be just a bit under 10 years before the beginning events, he said trying to put together a rough timeline based on what he remembered from his first life and what had happened to him so far. Now if we are 10 years early what is currently going on, Ishin and Masaki should have moved to Karakura town. Ichigo and his gang should all be born by now. Aizen should still be doing his experiments and shifted his focus to Karakura town at this point. I can meddle, but I have to be very cautious. The more I meddle with the events and the earlier I do so the larger the effects that ripple from there are going to be making it near impossible to estimate how the original story will change. Although I don't want to be a slave to the original timeline I am still weak and the less I know about what is going to happen the larger chances of me getting fucked somehow, probably by Aizen, will be. Unlike him I'm not able to monitor just about everything and everyone at while I'm practically flying blind and my only advantage being my system and my knowledge about the original timeline, he tries to remember as much as possible about the actions of the main players at this point in the timeline. As for Soul Society currently everyone is currently wrapped around Aizen's fingers and barely has a clue as to what is going on. I guess I can almost completely disregard their involvement at least until the main events start, he nodded to himself as he was able to cut out a large chunk out of the picture not having to worry about it for the foreseeable future. The single most important things to maintain the timeline at least in broad lines is for Ichigo to become a substitute Shinigami. If that doesn't happen the whole timeline is out the window completely and I will have nothing to go off of. For this to happen Masaki has to die and I have to let Fishbone D find Ichigo and attack his family. Sorry Ichigo no offense but if my choice is between you suffering and me and my family. It's not much of a decision. Hmm, do the events have to happen the exact same though? I do feel bad not doing anything at all for them, he spends some time wondering about what he can do to manipulate the timeline without breaking it. I can save Masaki, but she has to disappear at the same time Grand Fisher kills her so Ichigo can become the emo boy he was meant to be and be influenced to strengthen his spirit power to see ghosts and attract Fishbone D. To do this he both needs to see his mom get killed by a hollow and be touched by a hollow's spirit power to make sure the events stay roughly the same. She dies around six years before the events in episode one, I can go to Karakura around that time and keep an eye on her. Find out when Fishbone D starts hunting her then shortly before the event of our Fishbone. Then to maintain the timeline I'll have to take his place and act out the murder of Masaki and kidnap her so she can't influence the timeline any further at least until Ichigo becomes a substitute Shinigami. After I can be a little more free at least once Aizen completely betrays Soul Society and moves to Lost No Chase. At that point I should be much stronger and the timeline would be pretty set without causing too much variance, he tries to go over the various permutations that his changes could affect before deciding that it is indeed a viable plan. 
Ichigo may hate my guts after that happens, but I'm if given the choice between having the trauma of thinking his mom died for around 6 to 7 years and his mom actually dying he would be happy with the first. So don't blame me, but that's as much as I can risk changing for you, he finally makes a decision. Now after I make sure the events leading to Kurosaki going to Soul Society have succeeded I'll need to have a way to travel to Hueco Mundo and the power to survive there so I can be ready and powerful enough to keep an eye on Aizen once he retrieves the Hogyoku and starts creating artificial Erenkar. I need to be at least an Ajuchas or preferably a Vasto Lord at that point. To be able to quickly transform into a Jillian I will either have to eat enough hollow on earth to evolve or I'll need to be powerful enough to rapidly consume hundreds of hollow right after going to Hueco Mundo there before hunting other Jillian too until I can evolve into an Ajuchas. Is this even feasible? I can't risk transforming into a Jillian on earth though. Even with my spirit power concealment skill there is no way the Shinigami are going to overlook a big ass Jillian walking around on earth for long and even a lieutenant would be enough to kill me even as a Jillian. System any ideas? He asked. Calculating. Answer. System is capable of suppressing host's transformation into Jillian allowing host to devour sufficient or excessive hollow souls to initiate the evolution it will after. Okay that makes the plan a lot more feasible. There would be no way to leave for Hueco Mundo after Ichigo leaves to Soul Society then consume enough hollows to become a Jillian then consuming enough Jillian to become at least an Ajuchas all before Aizen bails from Soul Society and has success experimenting and creating Erenkar. Even with the system and all the advantages it affords me it's just too short of a time frame for such rapid growth. If I can exceed the requirement of becoming a Jillian then wait until he leaves for Soul Society then quickly transform into an above average Jillian with the excess spirit power and start a devouring spree of Jillian in the forest of Minos I just might make it in time. This would be so much easier if I didn't have to take Aizen into consideration with everything I plan. As much as I loved Bleach growing up I really wish it was a show where all the villains were as dumb as Grimjow and just thought about fighting and killing rather than planning, it would make my life so much easier. Where did my easy life as a computer wizard replacing Bill Gates go? Oh yeah that was also Aizen's fault with his experiments. Asshole he thought sneeringly. Well at least I have the rough outline of what I will be focusing on for the next 10 years he sighs. Chapter 10 Hollow Hunting Hisashi is hanging from the side of a building as he stalks a hollow he has been watching since he sensed it earlier today. He feels fairly certain he is stronger, but he isn't willing to take any risks on his potentially first fight with a hollow. Making sure both stay out of its line of sight and running his spirit power concealment, he has managed to track it down and stalk it without being caught for the last hour and it just seems to have set its mind on plus that must have looked particularly appetizing to it. The closest thing to compare the hollow to would be an overgrown rat-like creature with elongated limbs and a hollow mask running over most of its snout and skull. Though it was very big compared to an actual rat, it was still dwarfed by Hisashi's size as it was only reached around 5 to 6 foot tall. What it lacked in size and in turn likely strength it more than made up for with its burst speed being almost as fast as Hisashi's regular speed despite him religiously pumping his free stat points into his dexterity. Leaping from building to building as silently as he can he keeps tracking the hollow watching it like a hawk as it chases the plus through the streets until it finally manages to back it into a corner. He crouches tensing his legs in preparation to pounce and notices the hollow letting down its guard a little as it knows it has finally cornered its prey with no way out. Hisashi does his best to predict the hollow's trajectory and the moment he notices the hollow's hind legs tense he leaps at the location he predicts with the maximum amount of power he can afford without losing control. The hollow leaps at the plus cowering in the dead end, but Hisashi has a clear aim for its head and draws back one of his arm blades as he rapidly descends down on the unsuspecting hollow. At the last moment before reaching the plus, the hollow seemed to notice something and at the last moment dodged to the side as fast as it could. It managed to avoid being beheaded, but still lost one of its hind legs that was just too slow to get away from the slash. The ground shook and the pavement is cracked where it had been a moment ago, now revealing Hisashi with its missing leg pierced on the end of one of his blades before pops in his mouth like a small snack. It only takes a few moments before the rat hollow's high speed regeneration starts to kick in and the leg begins to regenerate at a speed fast enough to see with the naked eye. 
Hisashi isn't going to give it a chance now that it temporarily couldn't make use of the majority of its speed which heavily relies on its hind legs. He has to finish this before it manages to regrow it though and regains its lost mobility. It tries to intimidate him with a piercing screech like hollow roar, but when combining its diminutive size when compared to him and the missing leg it makes it laughably ineffective. He spins around and launches himself at the rat hollow again his right arm slashing at it. The rat dodges to right, but fails to realize it's a feint in time and Hisaki manages to chomp a big piece of its mask off. This immediately causes the rat hollow to drop and struggle to even maintain its life. It's obviously dying, unlike a missing limb a heavily damaged mask isn't something it can recover from. Hisaki doesn't have time for this as every second more of the rat hollow's spirit body is dispersing losing him his precious spirit power. At this point it is completely incapable of resisting as he devours the rest of it in seconds. Plus 500 XP. XP, 517 out of 550. Plus 10 spirit power. Spirit power, 62. Holy shit! Hisashi was blown away by the numbers he was seeing. Isn't this a bit much compared to human souls? He immediately asked the system. Answer. Hollow souls are most optimal for devouring as conversion of the spirit power has the highest efficient. Even though the amount of spirit power contained by this hollow is in ten times that of the humans you devoured before due to the compatibility in devouring hollow spirit power much more of the spirit power is retained after converting the spirit power you devour from a hollow. This is the reason hollow turn to consuming each other rather than human souls to be able to evolve to Agilian and beyond. Shinigami souls are better than human souls, but mostly due to their spirit bodies containing far more spirit power. Their conversion efficiency is barely above human souls. To summarize hollows are the best when considering risk to reward for consumption. I guess deciding to switch from animal souls to hollow was the right decision. Pluses might be safer, but although I can stomach devouring people that I absolutely know are bad like those that attack Reina, I don't feel comfortable attacking regular pluses while knowing they are likely just innocent people. I could go to prison to devour people there, but honestly with Japan's conviction rate I really don't feel comfortable judging that the people incarcerated are guilty of what they have been sentenced for with any certainty. The risk in this attack was controlled and manageable, there was barely a chance of me to be harmed and the reward was immense. If I continue my strength should grow far faster than it has been munching on animal spirits. Finally there is little to no guilt when eating basic hollow. Though Ajuchas and beyond regain some semblance of consciousness beyond their baser instincts this isn't really the case before that point. The closest was Oraheim's brother and really he had barely transformed and was actively losing his mind to the point where he ended up harming his sister in the end anyway. By that standard there is no need to feel guilt over devouring what are in essence mindless beasts with little consciousness controlled by their base desire to consume which only end up harming innocent people, he justifies to himself that it's no different than killing a dangerous predatory animal that's terrorizing the city and doing so also happens to help him towards his goals. He is pretty much being a good Samaritan. When he turns away he leaves behind a scared and confused plus unsure why it is still alive after running into not one, but two powerful monsters. Its senses were screaming at it that they were its natural predator and that it was going to die from the moment it ran into them. Chapter 11, Sister It was a few days before Hisashi could even think about approaching his family again, but as much as he wanted to he couldn't just stay away as that pained him even more than he already was being unable to communicate with them. He started visiting the house again and after and eventually walking his sister to school again though making sure to keep more distance now hoping she wouldn't notice with her weak spiritual perception. Unlike his hopes though Reina did notice shortly after he started coming by again. At first she was terrified, thought about hiding it and was even concerned that she was going crazy. However the aftermath of the guys that were sexually harassing was very clear so there was no question something happened. The authorities had eventually deemed it as a heart attack suspecting since the five victims were all connected and they all died in a relatively short time frame they must have consumed something that induced the heart attack in all of them, because as unlikely as that seemed it was the most believable answer and Reina was too afraid to say anything about what she worried may have been some kind of hallucination after she calmed down and that this would just lead to a quick trip to the loony bin. 
However, it is kind of hard not to notice a giant blur repeatedly showing up near your house and around you. She decided for the moment to just act like she couldn't see it and watch how things go before making any big moves. At first she was terrified any time she noticed the blur, but as time went on and it didn't seem to do anything she calmed down a lot though remained quite cautious. This went on for a few weeks when she started noticing that the blur started getting clearer over time. Also she had noticed it would follow her to school before leaving her alone during school. It seemed wholly uninterested in being around her while in school and it wasn't always there after school. It seemed to be most consistent around her house and following her to school. Why wasn't it doing anything else though? Now that it's getting clearer it doesn't look like a human at all, but it's behaving like a person. Do I have a ghost stalker? She once again started questioning if she was actually losing her marbles as none of this made any sense at all. As more time went by she also noticed that it was regularly making some kind of sound while she was walking school. At first she could barely make out the sound but over the weeks it became a little clearer, though she couldn't make out exactly what the sound it was making was. Is it, talking to me? She wondered confusedly. She wasn't sure at first, but... The strangest thing of all was that although the creature was becoming clearer and clearer and seemed to be stalking her which should have made her increasingly terrified. Strangely a feeling inside her was growing that she was familiar with this creature. It felt vaguely like when you see a classmate from a long time ago and they look very different, but there is something uncanny about them and you feel familiar when you run into them on the street or at the store not having seen them in years. There is no instant recognition, but a familiar feeling telling you that you should know them, but you just can't figure out why. She couldn't figure it out even as more time passed. Okay. It's gotten clear enough to where it's clearly something anyone would call a monster. It looks like a bug, but it's so big it wouldn't even fit in my bedroom. Why does it feel like I should know it though? I'm sure I've never met a giant bug before. Is it maybe the ghost of a normal bug and it just got really big after dying? I've never kept or been around any bugs though. If it wasn't for it following me for months now I would think it was stalking me to eat me, but I can't imagine it hasn't already had plenty of chances for that, she was starting to think maybe she wasn't going crazy as the changes and improvements seemed to be slow, but consistent and expected that if she was really losing it then the change would be more erratic, not so consistent. Due to the familiar feeling she decided to pay more attention to it and listening to it ask it talk to her. At first it just sounded like some bassy grumbling from the depths of hell, but over time it started clearing up some turning into something that sounded like a demon talking rather than hell itself. She couldn't quite understand it yet, but felt if it kept improving she might actually be able to understand it eventually. Meanwhile Hisashi was spending every moment not spent with his family hunting any hollow or animal souls in overdrive which had lead to an explosion in his stats and spirit power. He was itching for more missions though. Stats are indeed nice, but you need the skills to use these stats to the best effect. Take speed for example. Sure you can be fast, but without mastering a skill like Shuenpa or Sonido there is no way you are going to catch up purely based in stats as the skills act like a multiplier to the stat. Well theoretically you could but it would take forever to get to the point where you could outspeed even a mediocre Shinigami Shuenpa, let alone monsters like Bayakuya or even worse Yorichi. System status panel, he requested. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 49. Race, hollow. Rank, hollow. Level, 10 to 34. XP, 2183 out of 4960. Stats. Strength, 5 to 19. Dexterity, 16 to 30. Constitution, 10 to 15. Intelligence, 5 to 6. Spirit Power, 63 to 1391. Available Stat Points, 0. Passive Skills. Spiritual Energy Absorption. High Speed Regeneration. Acidic Touch. Active Skills. Soul Body Separation. Spirit Power Concealment. He had put a point into intelligence just to see what effect it had and it seemed the biggest difference was on how well he could control spirit power and his skills. Definitely useful, but much more useful when he actually has more spirit power and skills to use so for now it's been on the back burner. 
There also seem to be a bunch of small bonuses like slightly enhanced learning speed, memory, calculation ability, reaction speed. In general, a bunch of things either completely or at least in part related to his brain. Although good things to improve the bonus was small enough that though noticeable it wasn't enough to convince him to invest purely based on those until the larger benefits to spirit power and skill use became big enough. For now he needed power and fast though and improving his physical stats seemed to be the quickest way though to make sure he could control the Grand Fisher situation completely. Chapter 12, Home Invasion Hisashi was taking some time in the evening and spending it watching his family at home enjoying their time together. It was the closest thing to spending family time together that he could create so he would do this quite regularly. They had just wrapped up dinner, his father was watching something boring on the TV. Meanwhile his mom was cleaning up the kitchen and washing the dishes. Finally his sister had gone upstairs to study up in her room he noticed she was messing with his old computer while referencing some books. She would look out of the window every so often and he was getting somewhat worried that she might have noticed him not yet aware that her spiritual perception had strengthened quite a bit along with her spirit power. She wasn't quite at Ichigo before before meeting rookie levels, but was slowly getting closer to it unwittingly. Due to this he was starting to become rather clear having gone from just a barely noticeable blur to more like a ghostly version of himself. Wait he is a hollow, he is a ghost version of himself. Suddenly an annoying alarm sounded for the second time and he was not happy considering what happened the first time he heard it. Emergency Mission, Protect Your Family Home Reward, Illusory Aura Fuck! I doubt it's wanting me to protect the actual building from a termite infestation, he thought to himself and immediately stretched his spiritual perception as far as he could currently. It didn't take long for him to notice two traces of hollows heading his direction. Though they were all weaker than him, he wasn't excited about dealing with two at the same time. Why are they heading this way? I'm concealing my spirit power, he questions. Answer, your sister's spirit power has grown to a level where it is noticeable to hollow. Wait, when did that happen? If that's the case, why haven't I noticed? Answer, you can, but hollow are instinctually attracted to any higher spirit power souls. This has been suppressed in you to reduce the innate instinct to devour anything capable of providing spirit power. In return you have to consciously focus your spiritual perception to pay attention to such things. This is closer to how it would be experienced by Shinigami or Arankar rather than regular hollow which run mostly on instinct. Normally he would find a vantage point and wait for the best moment to launch a sneak attack, but he couldn't stray far from the house since both hollow were coming from different directions and if he left to engage one the other would definitely make it to the house before he made it back. His only advantage was that they didn't have a clue he was there yet. He immediately hid in the blind spot behind the house where neither would be able to see him at first glance upon approach. Meanwhile he made sure to make himself as small as possible. He needed to take out one of them using a sneak attack before they even knew he was there so I could hold off the other immediately after. Inside Reina noticed Hisashi's unusual sudden movement, usually he would move cautiously and slow to both prevent any damage and avoid being noticed, but he had no time for that now. She ran up to the window and watched him disappear around the house. She ran to follow him through the house watching him through the windows with curiosity when suddenly she heard a loud hollow roar except it wasn't coming from Misashi's direction, rather it was on the opposite end. She quickly ran back to the other side of the house again watching out of the window and moments later she saw another monstrosity running towards them. It looked like a ten-foot gorilla running towards them on all fours with disproportionately oversized fists and a white mask. Moments later a slightly different roar resounded off to the right and slightly further away than the first another was running towards them. She fell back from the window, but couldn't take her eyes off what seemed to be impending death. Hisashi could sense the two hollow getting closer at relatively high speed, though after his growth it seemed a snail's pace in comparison. They were quite reckless and were rushing at the house. They hadn't noticed him yet and both seemed to want to get there first, probably worried the other would beat them to the meal. He crouched down while tracking them closely. 300 feet. 250 feet. 50 feet. 
he immediately jumped straight up causing a local tremor and tilted himself forward in midair while controlling the spirit particles to create a vertical surface at his feet then immediately jumped forward in mid-air using the surface with full force launching him straight at the first hollow. It was hard to achieve this as he was purely doing this through his spirit particle control that he had never been trained on. Thankfully his high dexterity helped him a lot since he only needed to sustain the surface for a moment. He ripped through the air at almost half the speed of sound, the fastest he has ever moved. Before the hollow even registered his presence he had already flown past it, but overshot it due to not holding back in power at all when kicking off the spirit particle platform. To catch himself he immediately stuck his other blade into the ground digging a deep trench as he used it to slow him down and swing back around. Plus 900 XP XP 3,083 out of 4,960. Reyna noticed a blur past the window and in turn the monster before it slowed down revealing the familiar monster. She heard a scream from downstairs and quickly ran there not sure what she was wanting to do. When she go there her parents were confused. First there seemed to be a light earthquake that came without any warning on the TV or radio and now there was an extremely loud grinding sound. When they looked outside they could see the road out front seemed to be dug up, but they couldn't find a reason. Meanwhile Reyna could see one unfamiliar monster slowly dissipating into black particles while the familiar one was running straight back at them. Chapter 13 Home Defense Hisashi made it back to the building and turned around just in time as the other hollow got there slamming into him. Unfortunately, unlike his speed his strength wasn't that high yet and he was pushed back a few feet almost crashing into the house. He dug into the pavement using all claws on his four feet and managed to halt the momentum. The hollow managed to separate itself from him and jump back a few feet. This one looked more human-like with no fur and a bipedal form though it had some kind of whip like appendages instead of arms. It was a decent bit slimmer than the other had been. As soon as it freed itself from his grip it started whipping with its arms. He managed to block most of its strikes with his blades though surprisingly he didn't manage to cut them right away and even was receiving some blows that he couldn't dodge because dodging would mean the house would get him instead. The reason its arms weren't being cut seemed to be a combination of its arms being hardened and it redirecting them just before hitting his blades to change the contact from a direct to a glancing blow. Thankfully though being hit by its tricky whip movements the damage wasn't too great, it seemed to be geared more towards dexterity rather than strength like the first had been allowing him to tank the blows with just just scratches though he did make sure to completely block any of the attacks heading towards his mask. Reyna inside was watching without blinking, it was clear now that the familiar monster was protecting them and the first time wasn't some kind of coincidence. As she saw it get whipped continuously due to the angle and high speed of the movements she didn't know he was actually successfully blocking the vast majority of the hits and that those that did hit were having limited effect on Isashi, which made her worry for him and firmed her feelings that whatever he may be, he really wasn't something bad at least for them. Their parents were still extremely confused as now they kept hearing explosive sounds and slowly more of their front yard was turning into a destroyed wasteland as the ground was torn up and trees and bushes were cut to pieces or practically exploded all this for no apparent reason. Reyna started running towards the front door worried that the familiar monster wouldn't be able to survive if it kept protecting them like this. Reyna what are you doing? Her father yelled after her and grabbed her by the wrist. It's dangerous, he continued. I don't care, she shouted over the noise as pulled her arm free running out the door. Despite being scared of what was going on both their parents chased her worry for her safety more than they were scared for their own lives. Them running outside managed to distract the attacking hollow and freed Hisashi from having to defend the house at all costs. Though a massive risk to his family it was also an opportunity for him. While the whip hollow was distracted its attacks slowed down noticeably and lost a decent bit of their accuracy. Before it had a chance to refocus on him he made a quick step into striking range and with a quick and powerful twist transferring from his feet all the way through his body and into his arms he managed to slash the arms off the whip hollow. They fell to the ground with a thud. It realized it was going to die at this rate and self-preservation started outweighing its immense hunger causing it to turn to escape. Before it even got a chance to take another step though Hisashi followed up with a high-speed thrust piercing the back of its head instantly destroying its mask and ruthlessly ending its last struggle for survival. Plus 800 XP XP 
3,883 out of 4,960. Plus 14 Spirit Power. Spirit Power, 1391 to 1405. Reyna saw it taking down the last enemy and this time before it managed to dissipate it bit off the rest of its head swelling it whole in one go. This time she wasn't afraid anymore and just felt relieved. She felt that the danger had only come from the other two and that they were safe again even with the other one still there. There is no way this wasn't picked up by Soul Society. Two relatively strong hollows releasing large amounts of their spirit pressure as they put up a huge fight and tons of collateral damage. Even with mine remaining concealed they will get here any moment, he quickly realized and turned away from his family running off. He didn't even have a chance to notice Reina had run after him. A minute or two later a Shinigami suddenly appeared on the top of the house out of thin air and started to survey the scene. He had crimson hair pulled back into a high ponytail with a distinct widow's peak and eyebrows. A distinctive cloth is wrapped around his forehead. Hmm. There were two hollow signals here releasing high amounts of spirit power. There was obviously some kind of fight here. Where are they though, he wondered to himself out loud, though no one was able to hear him. Did they kill each other, he continued. Although unlikely he couldn't think of any other reason when combining the fact there was obviously in fight and both being missing without him even finding a trace of them nearby. It had only been a few minutes since the signals were noticed and he made his way here immediately. At the power levels recorded there was no way for them to run away fast enough for him to no longer even sense them in the area. Unless one survived and had some kind of very unusually unique skill involving space, time or high-speed travel none of which were common on regular hollow. A hell butterfly landed on his finger and he makes a report of the situation before releasing it. Then he turned his gaze to the two parents still standing there in a daze confused and unsure about what had just happened. Well time for the cleanup, I guess, he finished slightly annoyed that he was unable to fight the hollow. If Hisashi had been here he would definitely have recognized him as Renji Aburai who was currently still a member of the 11th Division. Chapter 14, Meeting Again Hisashi managed to run a few blocks away at full speed and quickly entered a plot with a house that was still under construction and hid inside. Unlike most Hollow due to his spirit power concealment skill getting as far away from the Shinigami so they couldn't sense him wasn't his priority, getting away and most importantly out of sight was most important. He made sure to hide in a place where he was covered from all directions and decided to wait until the next day. Although he could probably defend himself, run or potentially even defeat low-level Shinigami if it was a higher-level one he would be screwed and even if it was a low-level one and he could defeat it he would still become a known entity to Soul Society which is the last thing he wanted at this moment. He was already very happy that so far Soul Society seemed to mostly be ignoring the fact that Naruki City had become unusually safe from hollows for seemingly no apparent reason over the past few months. Thankfully he knew Soul Society wouldn't be taking it as seriously as if a Quincy was killing Hollow and upsetting the balance though so he should be safe for now with them just assuming the activity in the area was lower since the patrolling Shinigami were coming across fewer Hollow 2 matching the readings and he made sure he hadn't been sighted nor caught up to this point. Emergency mission completed. Skill Illusory Aura granted. Why did this only pop up now instead of when I killed the second one, he wondered. Answer until host left they were still at risk. He suddenly heard an unexpected noise and turned ready to either flee or attack when he saw Reyna shuffling back behind a wall she had obviously stumbled out behind from. Reyna, he blurted out in surprise. This time through a combination of him getting used to speaking using his new body, producing intelligible human speech with a non-human mouth is quite hard it turns out, and her spiritual perception having become quite strong now she actually managed to understand him well enough to know he said her name. Her eyes widened in surprise. It. It really spoke, she though finally sure it had been trying to talk to her before. Um, H hello, TT there, she managed to stutter out. She took a deep breath, she had decided to trust her feelings and firmed her resolve. Do you have a name? She sounded more confident now. He looked quite awkward purely from his body language despite her being unable to read any facial cues due to the mask. He seemed to become kind of fidgety after the question though as if it had made him nervous. Should I tell her? She won't believe me though, but I can't lie to her either, he thought to himself. 
Um, it's Hisashi, he finally managed to say with trepidation. Hisashi. She thought quite stunned by the answer. What a coincidence. That was my brother's name too, she responded not sure how to feel. I know, was all he managed as a response. You know, she seemed very confused and tried to understand the situation as it wasn't going the way she was expecting at all. Why did he say he knows, she wanted to find out more. Why was he protecting them? Why was he staring close to them? Why did he feel so familiar? Why didn't he attack them like the others? So many questions without answers. He seemed to nod in response to her question. What do you mean? She asked hesitantly. She was afraid that if she asked the wrong question he might react negatively, but she absolutely had to know more. He was silent for a little bit. That bracelet you're wearing. Your eighth birthday was coming up when you saw that at the store. You couldn't shut up about it, how it made you look like a princess, how much you wanted it. It went on for weeks. It didn't stop until you unwrapped it as my gift on your birthday. It took all the money I had saved in the past eight months. It was worth it though, he said. Reina's eyes started tearing up and she looked even more confused now despite trying to keep up a strong front. I am possible, she thought. A-R-Y you my high Hisashi, she asked, doubt and worry were evident on her face. Hisashi remained silent for a while before hesitantly nodding. She suddenly ran towards him wrapping her arms around his waist, that was the highest she could reach, and started wailing while unintelligible words and sentences seemed to be mixed in. He was quite awkward due to the surprise and was most focused on keeping his blades away to not harm her while also worrying that his acid touch would burn her. He was in luck though as she seemed unaffected. System, why isn't she getting burned? He asked quickly worried that he might still be a danger to her. Answer, since it was your hollow spirit power that stimulated her spirit power she is immune to the corrosive effects of a hollow's touch. He sighed with some relief, but was also starting to grow concerned about how his presence was affecting her too. She finally managed to calm down her wails turning to sobs instead. You died. What happened to you? We had your funeral. Where did you go? She mumbled one thing after another between sobs without pause. They weren't hard to make out with his enhanced senses though. I, I did die. Well was killed really, he admitted. But why are you here? Did did you go to Yomi? She asked. No I was, well I guess asleep, he responded not sure how to explain everything. It's not that hard for him to understand since he is familiar with Bleach, but for someone who has no clue about any of this it's bound to be insanely confusing. Chapter 15 Explaining Things Hisashi took a deep breath, this was going to be a long conversation. He needed to explain it to her though. She had saw down cross-legged in front of him and had crossed her arms looking up at him questioningly. He folded his legs underneath him sitting down too. Is this C's? Oh well. So I was killed back then by something like what I am now, he started. Wait does that mean if those two before killed us we would have also become like you, she interrupted him. She is usually a polite girl, but she feels comfortable enough with her brother to interrupt him without feeling like she is being rude. He might have spoiled her a little too much back then and curiosity must have gotten the best of her. Um... My situation was a little unusual compared to a regular attack. Normally they just eat people making themselves stronger and the people they eat are gone forever. That's also the reason why I was gone for so long, because I was asleep while I transformed which is also unusual. I slept for ten years while I transformed, he answered. Whoa, so what are you? she asked eager to say her curiosity. I'm now something called a hollow. It's essentially a corrupted soul. Normally when you become one you turn into a mindless beast and slave to his hunger for souls with little to no consciousness like the other two you saw. In return they become very powerful though. If you see anything like me just run, he told her sternly. You can recognize a hollow mainly by two features, one is the white mask he pointed his blade towards his mask before lowering it to the hole on his thorax, the other is the hole somewhere on their body, most commonly where their heart would normally be. She got up and carefully touched the edges of the hole that traveled all the way from the front to the back of his thorax. It's, it's really a hole, 
she said, utterly flabbergasted. Doesn't that hurt? she asked in worry. No, it's normal, he reassured her. So why were you invisible before? she asked the question that had been bugging her. It's not that I was invisible, you were just incapable of seeing or hearing me just like most other humans, he cleared up for her. Ah, so that's why mom and dad couldn't see you. But why can I see you now then? She was completely immersed in the conversation now. Well, that's my fault, I guess. I am. Um, he was feeling quite awkward now that he had to explain himself. I spent so much time near you that my spirit power managed to stimulate yours. Then when you experienced what you believed to be a life or death situation when you were first attacked and I showed up this awakened your spiritual sight albeit a very weakened form of it. Then as I spent more time with you your spirit power and spiritual sight continued to be stimulated slowly improving them over the months since then. I didn't know it had progressed this far though, he explained. She nodded her head seriously when she heard this. Her experiences over the past year or so were starting to make a lot more sense now. So what now? she asks him. Well, you may think the world is far more dangerous than you thought after your experience these months and today. However, I promise you, you are underestimating it by a huge factor, he responded. First off, there aren't only hollow like what you've met so far. There are also Shinigami. Like in the stories, she asked excitedly. Well, sort of, but not quite. Shinigami are originally human souls that have strengthened their spirit power granting them. Well, superpowers, I guess, would be close enough. They look like regular humans, wear black hakama and haori. They usually wield a sword of some kind too, and some can make it transform to power up. Kind of like a magical girl's. They are responsible for guiding regular souls called pluses to soul society and they exterminate Hollow like me, he explains. Hollow and Shinigami are the biggest two factions, then there are a bunch of smaller factions of humans and souls with a variety of superpowers quite unpredictable from one another. Some quite weak, but others even more dangerous than the Hollow and Shinigami he doesn't want to go into too much detail and have her constantly be worrying about things if he starts bringing people like Aizen and Iwak into the picture. He can bear this burden himself for now. Just being able to talk to someone else let alone a family member is a huge help and makes him feel better than he has since he died. The second one that is. Wait aren't the Shinigami the good guy, she asks. Only comparatively. Their main tasks are exterminating hollow and guiding souls to soul society. Though this in general makes them better than most groups as a whole you have to keep in mind they are just more powerful human souls. They still have all the flaws present in humans. Are humans the good guys? He asks her. I guess you have a point. So hollow, almost guaranteed bad guy. Shinigami, probably good guy, but no guarantees so still be very careful, she managed to recap it quite succinctly. Air, yeah I guess that covers the most important part of what I wanted to say, he responds sheepishly. They end up forgetting about the time as they talk all night about various things including what happened with the family after he died, what she had been up to and of course what he had been up to since him return. They didn't notice how long they had been talking until they noticed the sun started rising again. Let's take you back home, it's been a long night the coast should be clear now and you need to get some rest, he told her. Chapter 16, Cover Up Hey, what was that skill I got? he quickly asks the system as they head back to the family home. Illusory Aura Host is able to combine his spirit power with his iridescence to create illusions close to his body. The maximum range is just beyond the host's reach. This costs spirit power to maintain and the larger the changes the illusions impose upon reality the higher the cost. Wait, if I combine that with my spirit power concealment don't I actually have stealth now? he asks, suddenly far more excited about the idea of being a ninja jumping around town and ganking unsuspecting hollows even more than he already has been. Answer, host can still be heard. Close enough. Now this is the good stuff I've been talking about, he cheers his fortune. Also with his high dexterity unless he is maxing his speed and power output he can already be extremely silent. I'll have to think of other uses for this skill too. 
It should be quite versatile, the only limitations on it seems to be the distance it can go and how much spirit power I have to fuel it which will only keep growing. Even more so if combined with other skills or items it could have similar synergistic effects like the stealth when combining it with spirit power concealment, he ponders about his newly acquired power. He doesn't spend too much time on this though as now his sister is no longer unable to see him and he actually needs to make sure he is paying enough attention to respond to her unlike before. When they get close to their home home it doesn't take long for their mom to notice and run out first to hug Reyna. Reyna, are you okay? It's good you weren't here when the crash happened. According to the police the truck driver was exhausted and ended up losing control. They found. Their mom starts talking a mile a minute. Ah, it seems the Shinigami did come by and MIB my parents. I guess it was a good thing Reyna ran after me and they missed her. She might have been able to resist it, but that would just gain us even more unwanted attention from Soul Society. A hollow attack on our doorstep is already more than enough. Any more coincidences than that and they are bound to start asking questions and looking into things. Hisashi thought to himself. He should probably explain this to his sister before matters get even more complicated when she tries to talk to their parents. The good news is his mom is still talking and Reyna hasn't really managed to get much in on the conversation herself. Reyna I didn't mention that the Shinigami are able to modify short-term memories of regular humans. They must have arrived sometime last night to catch the hollows and found the place the way we left it and decided to clean up after the hollow attack when they found out it was already over, he quickly informs her. She frowns before answering in a hushed manner to avoid their mom noticing, that's rather dark. They go around just mind wiping people whenever they feel like it. Well I told you they weren't what you can outright call the good guys. This is pretty much their M.O., thankfully I ran away when I did or I might have been caught and we don't want that kind of attention. Well at least not yet. The same goes for you if you run into one act like you can't see them and try to get as far away from as possible as quickly as you can without drawing attention to yourself. Now that your spirit power is strong enough to clearly see spiritual creatures they might notice if they get close enough to you, he retorts. She nods seriously, but they then both agree it's better to focus on their parents for now. Various crews are already working on the road and another is currently fixing the landscaping of the front yard. Rolling out new grass, replacing the cracked stone path and trees that have been left with just the stump. Thankfully beyond some scratches from high-speed debris flying around the house itself is almost completely unscathed. Nothing a paint job couldn't fix. And they must have really good insurance, the crew fixing the front garden was here before we even got up, their mom was still going on about everything that had happened. This was probably the most exciting event in her life for the past few years. Well, not if she could remember last evening, but she doesn't remember that. They agree they will talk more after she finishes talking with their parents and eating some breakfast. When she gets inside their father looks up and asks her what happened. She makes some kind of excuse about a girlfriend calling her with an emergency and having to go over. Thankfully when being a generally well-behaved kid lying to your parents becomes so much easier. After she scarfs down a quick breakfast she rushes up the stairs and locks room before opens the window so they can talk. So what's the plan from now on? She asks. No plan, you need to get some sleep, he responds sternly. She immediately laughs out loud, you and no plan? I think that must be the best joke you've ever told me. Hisashi frowns, she knew him too well. We'll talk about it later when you've rested and have a fresh mind, he brushed her off for now and she did need to get some rest. Whatever, she responds snarkily. I think I can see some dark circles and is that a crow's foot? He retorts without missing a beat. Okay, okay, mom. I'll get some sleep, she finally concedes. While heading to the bed she pointed towards his old computer and said you're going to explain that to me later. I've been trying to figure it out for ten years and still can't even make sense of half of it. Then she just crashed on her bed without even getting undressed or changed and started snoring like the princess she was within a few minutes the long night and adrenaline from the fight have really exhausted her. Shortly after she went to sleep he went out for his usual patrols and hunts. He was definitely working harder than the entire Shinigami squad responsible for Naruki City put together. Plus 1100 XP. 
XP, 4,960 out of 4,960. Level up. Level, 34 to 35. Plus 1 stat point. XP, 23 out of 5,280. Plus 17 spirit power. System status panel please, he asked. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 49. Race, hollow. Rank, hollow. Level, 34 to 35. XP, 23 slash 5280. Stats. Strength, 19. Dexterity, 30. Constitution, 15. Intelligence, 6. Spirit power, 1405 to 1422. Available stat points, 1. Passive skills. Spiritual energy absorption. High-speed regeneration. Acidic touch. Active skills. Soul body separation. Spirit power concealment. Illusory aura. All right, put the stat point into strength, he told the system. Answer, affirmative host strength has been upgraded by 1 to 20. Chapter 17, New Toys. Hisashi had finished his patrols for the day early and finally had some time to experiment with his new powers. He asked his sister for a rather large mirror. She found a full-length mirror which she brought outside putting it down in front of him. Thankfully their father was at work and mom was out to visit a girlfriend of hers so there was no one to judge his sister for dragging a mirror out into the backyard for no apparent reason. It took a moment before he got a good feel for his illusory aura, suddenly it clicked in his mind and an iridescent shimmer seemed to flash across his body before his body started fading until he had completely blended into the background no longer being visible in the mirror. Whoa, so cool! Reyna yelled. Are you still there? She was wondering exactly what he had done. Yeah, this is an illusion skill, not a movement skill. I'm still in front of the mirror though it's a little weird looking into a mirror without seeing yourself, he quickly answered her. When he looked down at himself he could still vaguely see himself and of course feel his body so turning invisible didn't have a major effect on his own direct perception of his body only on others or if he indirectly perceived himself such as in a picture, video or mirror like now. He was glad that it didn't take much effort to get down the basics of this new skill, now it would be a matter of improving the speed of the skill and also thinking of various unique and effective ways to employ the skill both in and out of combat. With a just a thought slowly only his mask become visible again, the rest of him remaining invisible. All right, controlling smaller areas seems to have no additional cost in mental strain nor spirit power beyond consumption increasing with the degree I'm altering reality with the illusion so I seem I have just about absolute control on what is seen within the range of illusory aura. That's good, he nods, though with only his head being visible it looks rather awkward. Well, for stealth this is already 100% a success, as long as they don't hear me there is no way for them to see me nor are they able to sense my spirit power due to the concealment skill, he thinks out loud. Yeah, that's going to be so useful. Reyna adds with a wide smile. Her curiosity is getting the better of her again and all of this is stuff that's just so out of this world. Who doesn't want to see supernatural powers and events? Well at least if you aren't endangered by them. Reyna can you help me with something? he decided to move on to the next step of testing. Sure thing, what do you need, she said turning serious. I'm going to make my head invisible again, once I'm completely invisible I want you to watch where I was. I'm going to move with some speed and I want to tell you if the effect slips or has other problems once I start moving a lot or quickly, he tells her. His head fades away. Looking in the mirror as he does it seem to be the case that the process is slowly getting faster as he gets used to controlling this power. After a few moments he starts dashing around the backyard. He kept doing this for about a minute. How about it? He asks reappearing where he was before. Um, did you move? She asks quite unsure. From her perspective he disappeared, a minute went by with nothing and then he reappeared. Yeah, I moved all across the yard even circling around you, he added. What? I didn't notice. Wait, shouldn't you still make sound? She wonders out loud. Unless I move quite fast or with excess power, I'm able to keep my movements very silent. 
If you had some kind of enhanced senses you might be able to tell a little, but as a human your sense of hearing is quite weak, he explains. She starts pouting. Like it's so cool to be a hollow, she says looking away. What did my sister turn into at Sundara, he teases. I'm not at Sundara. I'm just annoyed that you get cool powers. It's not fair, she quickly retorts with a dash of embarrassment. Well it's not as fun as it looks or at least wasn't before you could see me, he says, mumbling the last part. Without warning his sister suddenly he manipulates his illusory aura and a second right arm seems to appear from his shit identical to his regular one. Did you just grow another arm? she asks him in shock. No it's still the same thing really. Try touching the new one, he told her. She carefully tries grabbing the dull side of the blade, but her hand just passes through it. That's so weird. It really messes with your mind, she mumbles. Okay, now on to the second part, he says and goes back to focusing on what he really wanted to test. Suddenly the real version of his right arm disappears leading only the fake one. All right, now this could be extremely useful though to really make full use of it I would need to be able to do all parts of this at high speed while in combat, he decides he is going to need to practice a lot to speed up the process if he wants to make the most of this power. It's perfect for sneak attacks and misdirection. Combining it with his rapidly growing dexterity this could be extremely dangerous. Well to his enemies at least. The spirit power cost also seems very manageable. I should be able to use it along with other skills quite regularly in a drawn out battle without being concerned I will run out of spirit power before my enemies do. Once I grow and rank up though it should go from a small amount of consumption to pretty much negligible barely being different from a passive I can control at will, he predicts. Reyna was just watching the entire thing in amazement not sure what to say as it was all very unreal, at least as unreal as things could get considering her dead brother came back as a hulking monster. She really wanted to help though. Chapter 18, Eye of the Tiger for the next year Hisashi focused on grinding as many hollow as he could to grow his level and spirit power. The higher his dexterity became the larger the area he could effectively patrol became in turn speeding up his gathering speed. Although mind-numbing at times there is a certain addictive quality to bringing up levels and stats, even more so when they have an effect on your real-life abilities unlike in-game ones. He also spent a large portion of his available time outside of clearing the city on pushing his illusory aura skill to its absolute limits. He already had a feeling this was going to be one of if not the most important skill he has in the long run due to its sheer versatility compared to most of his other skills. Something like a Ciro or a Bala is a great attack, but Sonido for example is far more important due to its sheer versatility and illusory aura definitely falls on the Sonido end of the spectrum making it a must to master. It also didn't take a long time for it to become a core of his combat. Whether it was using it to stealthily sneak around town landing surprise attacks on Hollow lowering the risk of hunting immensely or if that failed using it during battle to confuse his enemy. This became easier and easier as he got faster and deploying the skill and more adept at its fine manipulation. He managed to get so good at it that he could now even imitate his former human form with it including all the mannerisms he used to have while still alive. He had started to use this form when talking with his sister to make her more comfortable. Although she had grown a lot more comfortable with his hollow form there always remains a certain amount of discomfort with a 10-foot giant insect. Achieving this may sound like it's no big deal, but if it was merely imitating his form he would seem like some kind of uncanny soulless puppet version of his former self. He had to imitate breathing, blinking regularly, the movements your eyes make when interacting with other people, the blood under your skin, how wrinkles form when making different expressions and the many many involuntary motions you make all the time without even realizing it. Though the end result seemed simple the sheer amount of mental capacity it consumed to mind all these things while maintaining the skill was staggering. Due to this it was an amazing way to train his proficiency in the skill though. He also spent some of his free time teaching his sister the ins and outs of the operating system he had been on the verge of completing before he died which was created with knowledge of OSUI from nearly 30 years in the future. Even if it had been delayed 10 years it was still 20 years ahead of any competitor on the market in usability and features. It might not be of any use to him anymore, 
but he could still make his family very wealthy if his sister could become proficient enough in it to be able to troubleshoot and update it she could take over and release it as a product like he was originally intending to do himself. Once released and it starts making enough profit she can easily just hire employees to continue development leaving it as mostly a source of passive revenue. Then his family wouldn't have to worry about anything financial anymore. Maybe his father would be able to finally work less or quit completely and spend more time with the family. He had always only been there on the weekend and breakfast often not returning until later at night. It would be better for his health too. It took a while but she had already been studying it for years. It's just that without someone to teach and explain it it was quite hard to understand the programming and design philosophy behind it since there was nothing like it yet. The popularization of Microsoft Windows and Apple Lisa helped her a little, but just on a bare-bones level. Not on any of the far more developed elements. After a year of him tutoring her though she had a firm grasp on the entire thing and was able to start updating it to address the 10 years of new hardware developments that had occurred since Hisashi originally programmed it. Finally he got one more emergency mission when his mom and sister were in danger by another hollow attacking them while they were out shopping together. It was getting easier to protect them though as his power was now well above an average base hollow. He actually managed to get his first non-hollow skill from this and was quite satisfied. It seems like he had hit another jackpot this time around. Plus one year. Plus one eight two five zero zero XP from Hollow. Plus one eight two five zero XP from Animal Spirits. Plus eighteen hundred XP from Pluses slash Humans. Plus fifty four seventy four Spirit Power from Hollow. Plus thirty six Spirit Power from Pluses slash Humans. Plus three sixty five Spirit Power from Passive Absorption. Plus 19 levels. Plus 19 stat points. Emergency mission completed. Skill blood granted. System, show me my status panel, he told the system. Status panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul age, 50 to 51. Race, hollow. Rank, hollow. Level, 35 to 54. XP, 52,973 out of 14,900. Stats. Strength, 20 to 25. Dexterity, 30 to 35. Constitution, 15. Intelligence, 6 to 15. Spirit Power, 1422 to 7297. Available stat points, 1 to 0. Passive Skills. Spiritual Energy Absorption. High speed regeneration. Acidic touch. Active skills. Soul body separation. Spirit power concealment. Illusory aura. Blood. He had boosted a lot more into intelligence this year because he found it had a rather noticeable effect on the improvement of his skill proficiency growth and spirit power control both of which had a rather large impact on his use of illusory aura, finally convincing him it was worth to invest a bit more in intelligence. Blood seemed to rely a lot on intelligence to control it without suffering backlash and his spirit power being the fuel to run it. The more spirit power he pumped into it the stronger its effects were, but at the same time it became harder to control the spirit power running through his veins and making a mistake with that could lead to serious backlash. It took a lot of effort figuring out how to use it while not receiving backlash, thankfully the strength of his hollow physique along with his high-speed regeneration allowed him to practice without worry that he couldn't recover if he did suffer some backlash. With the increase in intelligence though it became easier to keep more and more of it in control at once. Chapter 19 gonna fly now. Another year had passed before Hisashi had even realized it. He had been obsessive about continuing to improve illusory aura, but now also had blood to focus on in his training. He needs to get it to the point where he is able to run it subconsciously during battle rather than having to focus on the skill. He went through backlash numerous times, but as a hollow he was able to recover from minor backlash within minutes and even if it was more major backlash resting for a few hours would generally take care of the internal damage it caused. All the hard work had paid off though as he was now able to fight multiple hollow at the same time all while running blood artery or blood venting without losing control. It had been ingrained into his body to where it was as natural as breathing. 
Illusory aura was also becoming like a second nature to him as he constantly practiced it by imitating his former self or blending into all sorts of environments. One he liked to use was blending in with water. It was very hard to completely change all the ripples the body caused in the water and are ever shifting in unpredictable ways. If he made just a few mistakes it quickly becomes very obvious there was something in the water. Completely hiding in the rain was a complicated one too. His increasing dexterity and improving illusory aura in combination with blood artery was coming together in a deadly illusory dual swordsmanship where it was becoming harder and harder to tell what was a real strike and what was a feint. Real started feeling fake and fake started feeling real. It was starting to form a combination of skills that couldn't be countered by someone with a similarly powerful physique and spirit power, the synergy between the skills and his swordsmanship that he was slowly refining to work completely with the skills as if it had always meant to be one allowing him to punch above his weight. He hadn't quite mastered the ability to rapidly switch between blood artery and blood vene though which he felt was necessary to once again raise his combat effectiveness another step. It was hard to do because the flow of the two was very different and unlike running the skills through muscle memory this wasn't possible for the rapid switch which was still very likely to cause a backlash. Unfortunately, he hadn't gotten any further missions to grant him other new abilities. Though this was probably for the best as he hadn't mastered the skills he did have yet and spreading himself even thinner between grinding levels, spirit power and training his skills by adding another skill would just slow down the other things he was already working on. Reina had actually managed finishing the OS less than half a year in, she founded a small company and release it. At first growth was excruciatingly slow to the point where she personally had to go out and promote it and show people how to use it. One big benefit was our father was actually convinced and as an influential person in his company he actually managed to convince them to switch over after being shown how much more efficient their workflow could be. This made the company her first major business client and gave her a leg up. Then after a while she got lucky. A small computer hobbyist magazine with a relatively small but dedicated fan base that happened to have quite a few notable programmers among their readership invited her for an interview because this anomalous OS intrigued them. During this interview she happened to mention that the original version was programmed by her brother over 10 years but that he died shortly before finishing it and how she spent the last 10 years trying to finish it. The magazine didn't really go into it much further as they were more interested in the tech side of the OS rather than the backstory behind it. However, this was picked up by major outlets because it made for a powerful story. A young girl loses her brother then decides to pick up his mantle to revolutionize the computing world. It was an emotional story that could also serve as an inspiration for young girls. The story practically wrote itself and it didn't take long for it to spread from news outlet to news outlet gaining her an unexpected wave of free advertisement as suddenly she went from being unknown to an icon for young girls. She could be seen on the cover for newspapers, but also girls and technology magazines even talk shows discussed her for the novelty. All this talking about her and in turn her work lead to a massive spike. She got so busy she ended up having to drop out despite being in her third year of college. However, the income that came along with the booming company more than made up for not completing her degree. Even if both of her parents completely disagreed with her decision. She was already fast on her way to being a billionaire, in yen lol, in just months though. There were a lot of growing pains, but she managed to hire some reliable people to form the bare bones for an actual tech company in the following months. Plus one year. Plus 273750 XP from Hollow plus 22800 XP from Animal Spirits, plus 2250 XP from Pluses Slash Humans, plus 8211 Spirit Power from Hollow, plus 45 Spirit Power from Pluses Slash Humans, plus 365 Spirit Power from Passive Absorption, plus 20 Levels, plus 20 Stat Points. Status Panel, he told the system. Status Panel. Name, Saito Hisashi. Soul Age, 51 to 52. Race, Hollow. Rank, Hollow. Level, 54 to 74. XP, 3913 out of 26,330. Stats. Strength, 25 to 30. Dexterity, 35 to 45. Constitution, 
15. Intelligence, 15 to 20. Spirit Power, 7,297 to 17,242. Available Stat Points, 0. Passive Skills. Spiritual Energy Absorption. High Speed Regeneration. Acidic Touch. Active Skills. Soul Body Separation. Spirit Power Concealment. Illusory Aura. Blood. He had been pumping a lot of points into everything except Constitution. First of all why tank hits when using speed and illusions he can completely avoid them and on top of that Blood Vene actually is a massive multiplier to his Constitution even without having having to add points to it. Dexterity was still king though since it was the most useful to both his stealth attacks and his newly forming swordsmanship. His spirit power was also finally reaching significant heights where he could use his skills a lot without concern. Illusory aura, blood, and spirit power concealment didn't consume that much individually, but when running all three at the same time they do add up. Illusory aura, during his swordsmanship averaged around 80 spirit power per minute while spirit power concealment took only about 10 per minute. Blood, thought all depended on how much he was forcing into his veins and arteries, during his practice sessions he was using around 100 spirit power a minute to maintain blood artery. If he wanted to either tank a massive blow or add a burst of speed or strength it could quickly go into thousands per minute to sustain blood. At the beginning of the year he could only last about half an hour when running all three skills at the same time. Good enough to handle your regular hollow even if they can gang up on him, but definitely not enough if he runs into higher ranked enemies. Chapter 20 Kidnapping A few months later Hisashi returned from his evening patrol to find his mom the only one already home. It's pretty much expected for his father to not get home until late at night, but it looked like Reina was still at the office too. She was working later into the evening due to the high work volume and expansion at her company. After two years of hard work not only were they now becoming successful in the business world, but they had also managed to score some government contracts for their OS. Though the discount was significant the volume was absolutely insane and more than made up for it. She finished folding the laundry and moved on to preparing dinner as she usually does. She's very diligent about everything being in order and on time. She walked out with a full trash bag and put it out in the garbage been walking right by him. After what happened with Reina he had made sure to consciously not get too close to his parents all that much as they weren't sure if their parents gaining power would be a good thing or not. It could help them protect themselves, but it would also draw in more hollow and three humans with high spirit power popping up one after the other in the same location is bound to draw attention. They decided that for now it would be best to avoid it just in case. Suddenly he was alerted which hand happened in a long time. Emergency mission, save Reina. Reward, energy blade. He didn't waste a moment and ran to her office. She wasn't there so he started methodically scouting the town moving out from the office while using the maximum range of his spiritual senses searching for her spiritual signature that he was already familiar with. Going full speed it didn't even take him half an hour to find a warehouse on the outskirts of town. Nothing looked too unusual about it from outside the perimeter wall. Just an average warehouse with a wall surrounding it and a gate with a bored looking guard that looked like he was about to fall asleep on the job. He can sense Reina near the back of the warehouse though. Upon closer inspection from a nearby rooftop though there were armed guards patrolling around the building and he could sense quite a few more individuals inside which was definitely unusual for what seemed to be a closed warehouse late at night. Thankfully he doesn't sense anyone with high spirit power for a human. This means he doesn't even have to use his stealth. Doesn't get much more like a cakewalk. He just jumps over the wall, the only thing he has to pay attention to is to make sure he isn't making any noise or bumping into anything. He sees one of the guards and he looks more like a militia with the kind of gear he is wearing than a guard. He uses his soul body separation and single move removes his soul from his body. He was hoping to get some information out of him, unfortunately it seems to be impossible though as the mere sight of him scared him senseless to the point where he couldn't get a coherent sentence out of him. He decides moving forward he will just devour them and save the time rather than trying to get information. Plus 80 XP. XP 13330 30860. 
plus 2 spirit power. Spirit power, 18,689 to 18,691. He first circles the building perimeter, picking off three more armed militia members one by one. Now that he's finished clearing the perimeter, he heads to the warehouse loading dock, because there is no way he is getting through any of the regular doors without alerting everyone in the building. He manages to squeeze through the loading dock doors without making too much sound. Plus 80 XP X3. XP, 13570 out of 30,860. Plus 6 Spirit Power. Spirit Power, 18,691 to 18,697. The amount of space inside the warehouse is a lot more comfortable. He is currently in what appears to be a combination of a stocking and the loading area. Reyna seems to be in one of the offices near the back. He continues and clears out the last five militia members in the stocking area, making use of the shelving to hide the bodies. Plus 80 XP X5. XP, 13,970 out of 30,860. Plus 9 Spirit Power. Spirit Power, 18,697 to 18,706. He smells something burning and immediately rushes towards the back rooms. Smoke is coming out from around the door. He immediately forcefully broke into the room where he sees what he can only call an inferno. Panic has taken over by this point. Finally he notices Reyna in the center of the room, except she looks completely unscathed and was holding some kind of delicate looking silver scepter with a gem in the head and is using it like a flamethrower absolute torching the room along with anyone and everything in it like some kind of queen of flames. When she saw him her expression instantly changed from a ever so slightly deranged look to a wide smile with a hint of pride. She seemed to be perfectly impervious to the flames she was creating. He quickly finished off the souls of the souls of the three men on fire. At least he guessed they were men, at this point they were getting closer to charcoal briquettes. Extra crispy. Plus 80 XP X3. XP, 14,210 out of 30,860. Plus 6 spirit power. Spirit power, 18,706 to 18,712. Mission completed. Skill energy blade granted. Are you okay? Did they hurt you? He asks her, looking her up and down. She seems like she is. However, she is also conjuring fire. Better than ever. Look, I have powers now too, she said with a smirk while waving her scepter which seems to be moving the flames along with it. She was very proud to also have an ability now and couldn't help but gloat about it. If it weren't that she was adorable it would have been insufferable. He picks her up gently using the back of the blades to make sure she doesn't get hurt. It was technically a princess carry, but given that he was a giant monster it looked a whole lot more like he was the monster kidnapping the princess. Then he ran off so fast they disappeared on the spot. That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part 2. Peace.